Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Healthcare Experience Matters. Today, we're going to be discussing navigating generational diversity. And I have Lorraine Parker Clegg joining me this morning. Lorraine, welcome to the show. And I just want you to introduce yourself for listeners and tell us about the work you do in human resources. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Well, I'm a 25-year experienced HR person with some previous experience in sales and marketing prior to, to moving into HR. I did about 16 years in the world of pharmaceuticals, followed by seven years in major devices or medical devices, and in both instances with two major players that are domesticated in the United States. Um, and then I've had about six years in industrials, automotive, and aerospace. And so quite a, a variety of experiences during that time. And today I have a, co- a full leadership role, a global leadership role, um, leading a team around creating a compelling culture and making sure that the activities uh, that we do around talent acquisition, succession, learning and development are really driving powerful performance for the organization that I represent. That's great. We cannot wait to get your perspective on this very important and timely topic. Generations working together, we see it in healthcare, we see it in all industries. And it's really important, I thought, for us to take a pause on our normal programming and talk to somebody who is an expert on this subject. So I am so glad to have you here. Let's start it off by you just defining generational diversity for our listeners. Yeah, certainly. So when we think about diversity in its broadest sense, um, it's all about having a wide variety of perspectives in that business. And so more specifically, when it comes to generational diversity, it's about having multi-level representation of the multi-generations that are in the workforce. Um, and, And so that is about being inclusive in the representation in your own workforce But also what I'll call the yin and the yang of that, it's about being able to represent the perspectives of whoever we serve. And I guess your listeners might be thinking, why have you got someone in the industrial sector talking to us about healthcare? Well, I've had the privilege in in a past life of actually working with places like um, the National Heart Institute in in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur, and doing some work with that team around what they need to do with their multi-level and generational workforce in serving the patients or customers that they serve. And so um, at the end of the day, this is a really big focus for any organization, whether you're in healthcare, industrials, any consumer retail environment, this multi-generational workforce is impacting us right now as we speak and will do for the next several years. Absolutely. So many times I feel like the conversations we have on this podcast carry over into so many different industries outside of healthcare. So obviously today is no exception from that. I'm curious though, based on your experience in healthcare, Do you think this is a big focus for healthcare organizations in in hospitals right now, generational diversity? Um, Yeah, generational diversity, again, it's a focus for all of us. And so if I think about healthcare institutions, um, we've just come through some unprecedented times. Um, And ultimately, generational diversity would have been important despite that, but even more so now, because what we're seeing are some changes just in the way that people interact with work. So if I think about a healthcare institution, at the end of the day, there's an employment value proposition there that the institution has to offer to the folks that are then going to serve patients. Uh, and ultimately, that relationship translates into the patient experience. So if we think about where we're at right now, we've got this massive generational shift that's happening. Our baby boomers probably at the most have around nine years left in the workforce if we assume a traditional retirement rate or or age of about 67, which I think is not abnormal these days. Um, And so we look at the volume of people exiting the workforce. There were over 71 million baby boomers. We're being closely followed then by Generation X, of which there were only about 65 million people in that population. So we just do the math there. And first of all, we've got this transition happening where 
we inevitably leave behind some gaps in the quantity of people coming through to do the next phase of work. So that leads us on to the next challenge then. We've got a group of millennials coming through, of which approximately 72 million of those in the United States. Um, and, And we've got to prepare that group to fill the gaps that are being left by, I'll say, the deficit of the Gen Xs and the volume there. And so if we contemplate in in the world of our work, every facet is impacted here. The way that we interact on talent acquisition, it's clear that the way a millennial or indeed a Gen Z coming through as well want to interact on being attracted to an organisation is completely different than a baby boomer or, for that matter, a Gen X. Then once that individual's housed within the institution or the healthcare environment, that individual wants to be trained, developed in a different way. The way that that generation will harness the use of technology is clearly very different to the way that a baby boomer has come up through an organization. And so ultimately, every facet of the world that we're living in from a human resources standpoint or a human capital standpoint is impacted by this. And it's up to us as employers, one, to get that right. So in turn, that translates into the patient or the customer experience. Very, very well said. And now I want to ask about, of course, the challenges of a multi-generational workforce. We will touch on the advantages, but let's start with what is difficult when you have people from different generations coming together and trying to work on a team to get get a goal accomplished. Yeah. Uh, Again, that sales and marketing background for me, think about this, um, these generations as segments or cohorts coming through. And as you rightly say, that represents a series of challenges and a series of opportunities. Um, I think, first of all, the biggest challenge is the expectation differences. The way that a baby boomer versus a Gen X interacted with work is clearly very different than a millennial or um, a Gen Z coming through. And just the expectations around how folks have been educated in school, the, the different latitude that, that's been in existence as folks have grown up, the access to technology. You know, folks are completely interacting on the variety of forms of WeChat, Instagram, WhatsApp. And that's not really what the generation of baby boomers have, have grown up with. And the Gen Xers, you know, have touched on both sides of that fence. So I'd say it's a transitional scenario when it comes to technology for the Gen Xers. So challenge number one is how do we communicate with that next generation and how do they communicate upwards with the other generation that's kind of exiting the workforce? So I think that's number one. I think the second thing is that it's incumbent on us all to make that work because coexistence is necessary. We can't do without one or the other. Uh, And I I think I'm going to swiftly move to the advantages as I see that next generation come through. The um, alacrity with technology is a skill that we just need to harness because the more that we can use automation and technology to help us get some of the, the simple things done, the more time is freed up for a better qualitative patient experience or customer experience. And so, again, that coexistence is perhaps a theme that I want to leave today with as as we close out shortly, that um, we have to make it work and we've got to find that right balance. And it really is about marketing concepts. How do we market to multi-generations, diverse populations, and how do we listen? So the listening back to those populations is equally as important so that we can react and acknowledge the way that folks want to be managed and the expectations they have around how they get their work done. That's amazing, Lorraine. Thank you so much for breaking that down for us. And I usually leave the end of the podcast to, as an open forum kind of catch-all type question. So if you have any other you know, thoughts on how multi-generational workforces impact the patient experience that we haven't mentioned or anything else valuable to wrap this up, please go ahead and let our listeners know now. Yeah, I um, look so so many topics um, on on the way that we interact with our workforce. So I think um, we've just 
got to make sure that we are getting our head around the whole cycle of an employment life cycle. And again, that translates into a patient experience. So think through as an HR leader or a human capital leader in, in an environment of a hospital, how you bring people in, what their expectations are, what the kinds of flexibility that are needed to appeal to, to all facets of that organization. We're hearing about different working patterns, different locations. I would argue in a healthcare institution that, of course, the patient is at the forefront. It's difficult to remote work, but there are remote work possibilities. I think back to times when um, we had doctors perhaps in Japan interfacing with doctors in Japan, helping them with um, procedural elements. And so technology has a part to play. So it's about harnessing that. And we know that our multi-generational workforce Certainly the newer uh, gen, again, Zs uh, and the millennials are going to be helpful to us in translating that through and making that work for us. So it it opens up a whole host of opportunities. Think about learning, think about development, think about experiences. Um, You know, perhaps a Gen X would have wanted to stay in a role for multiples of years. It was normal that you'd stay in a role for three to five years, perhaps, But I think our newer generations are looking for quicker fire experiences. And we have to learn to get our head around that because ultimately, if we don't, that next generation will leave and go somewhere else. So that's something that we're constantly toying with as an organization. How do we continue to help develop people? Um, Keep the continuity because there is continuity needed, but at the same time, appeal across those multi-generations. And so I think every facet needs some thought and it's not an easy topic. And I'm sure that we don't get it right every day, but certainly as an HR team in my environment, we're striving to get it right every day. Lorraine Parker Clegg has been our guest today. And honestly, it is not an easy conversation. It is not easy subject matter. So Lorraine, this was amazing. I I appreciate your perspective so much. I know our listeners will feel the same way. Thank you. Lorraine Parker Clegg. She is the Chief Human Resources Officer for Allison Transmission. With, of course, as we touched on, an extensive healthcare background. Thank you so much, Lorraine, for your time today. Thank you. Thanks for asking me on.